Hey, what's up everybody? In this short video, I wanna show you how we can set up a local development environment for Superbase. So basically, we're going to be running an instance of Superbase locally on our desktops, which we can then use to make changes and play around a bit before we push anything to production. Right here, I'm going to start off and create a new uh, Next.js app. So I'm gonna write npx create next app at latest and we're simply going to call it my app and we're going to go with the default settings so this is simply going to bootstrap a blank next.js application so right now we have our next.js app we're also going to need docker desktop so make sure you have that installed you can see right here if i go onto my toolbar i have it running in the background the next thing we need to do is we need to initialize superbase and we can do that by npx superbase init and we're just gonna go with the default settings. So I'm simply going to confirm by pressing enter. And you can now see that it says finished Superbase init. And what this has done is it's added this new folder to our file structure, which has this configuration toml and some sort of temporary folder. You don't really need um, anything over here, but what is important is the configuration toml because it has all the settings for your local development environment and it controls like various aspects of your Superbase instance uh, such as the API settings, uh, the database configuration and uh, stuff like authentication. But yeah, we're gonna go into the details in another video, but for now we can just leave the default settings as uh, they are. One thing that I like to do is I like to deactivate the um, analytics in the configuration toml. The reason why is it simply breaks um, my containers uh, for some sort of reason. I don't know why that happens, but uh, just to be sure and just to make sure that it works for this uh, small tutorial, we can go down to the analytics and set enable to false. So now that we've initialized Superbase, the next thing we can do is we can start Superbase. So we're gonna need a new terminal for that. Let me briefly drag it up from the bottom. We're going to cd into our directory, my app, and we're going to write npx superbase and start. Now this is going to take a while because it's going to be pulling all the necessary container images if you're doing this for the first time. So just be a little bit patient and um, yeah, it's going to run through and set up all the containers. All right, so once it's done, you can see that it gives us this really nice summary output of all the most important local URLs. So if I go ahead and hit on uh, the studio URL, you can see that Superbase opens up. So this is what you would usually see if you go to the hosted version and uh, check out their website and log in. This is sort of the, 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 the basic welcome screen that you see. Um, and yeah, I have my tables over here. I have got everything that I need. But as you will notice, if you look into the URL bar, it's all running locally um, on my computer, which is super nice. So there are two things that we want to do right now. The first thing is we want to create some sort of table in our local Superbase instance uh, that we can interact with. And the second thing that we want to do is we want to interact with the database through our front end of our Next.js web app. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a simple table using migration file. And after that, we're going to interact with the database through our front end. So to create a new table within our locally running Superbase instance, we can go ahead and first off, start by making a new migration file. So we're gonna go npx Superbase and then migration uh, new, and we're gonna call it example migration and this is going to create a new migration within our Superbase folder over here. So you can see down in the migrations, we have a blank migration file where we can now um, add some SQL. Okay, so into this blank migration file, I'm going to go ahead and paste a few lines of SQL. And all this does is create a table called example table. And this example table is going to have one ID column which is populated by a random UUID. And there's also going to be a column called messages, which is a text field and it is not null. And 
to test all of this, we're simply going to insert some uh, example value. So we're going to insert into the example table um, the values uh, hello world. So we're going to save that. And after we've saved that, we can go ahead and open the terminal again and run this migration file so that the changes are applied to our locally running Superbase instance. So I'm going to write npx Superbase migration up. And I hope that runs through without an error. Yep, it did. And if I now go ahead and open up Superbase again. So now, once I've opened Superbase up again, you can see that we have the example table over here. And it has hello world. So that is exactly what was populated from the migration file that we had over here. Okay, but we're not quite done yet because there's one more thing which we really want to do, which is we want to interact with the database from our Next.js front end. So how do we do that? So let's start off by creating a new .end file within our directory over here. So we're going to go new file and we're going to call it .env. And within this new env file, we need to paste the anon key, which is this key over here. And we're also going to need the API URL, which is this URL right here. So I've copied both of them over into my end file and uh, cursor is already suggesting how I name these. So I'm going to name the Superbase URL next public Superbase URL. And then the anon key is going to be the next public Superbase anon key. There we go. Now we have our end file ready. The next thing that we're going to need is the client library. So we're going to open a new terminal and we're going to install the client library. So let's go ahead and write, oh, hold on, let me CD into my app. And then we can npm install at superbase slash superbase JS. So now that we have the client library, we also need to create the client. So we're going to go into the my app create a new folder, we're going to call it utils. And into the utils folder, we're going to create a new file called client, um, or no, let's call it superbase.ts. And then we can create the superbase client in here. So we're going to start off by importing the create client from the client library we just downloaded. And then you can already see that cursor has already uh, detected that we have a Superbase URL and a Superbase key, which are the ones which we set in the .env file a moment ago. So we can go ahead and tab to accept these changes. Um, and that's actually all we need. So it's suggesting some more stuff down there, which we don't need, but we can already go ahead and save this. So we've got the client library. We have the Superbase uh, client, um, in this file we created. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to make some changes to the page.tsx file. So let's go ahead and go to the app, then the page.tsx. And over here we have, um, yeah, some standard boilerplate code that you usually get when you first bootstrap a Next.js app. But we don't need any of that. So let's go ahead and delete all of it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to have the front end interact with the database. And the way that we're going to do that is we're simply going to create a simple form. And within this form, we'll be able to put in some text data and click submit. And the submitted text is going to land in the database um, running on our local computer. So we're going to first off write use client. Then we're going to import the client we just made. And below that, we are first going to create a submit handler. Um, I've prepared this one earlier. So I, let me just paste it in. Okay, so there we go. Then below, we are going to have our uh, form. So we're going to create the form. It's going to have an input and it's going to have a button to submit the input. And we have a form event handler, which is the handle submit, which we've created up here. And you can see the handle submit, all it does is it gets the form data, um, extracts the message from the form data, and then it uh, writes it into our database. So over here, we're using the client we just created a moment ago um, in the utils file. 
And we have the example table over here, which is the one we created in Superbase. And then we are inserting the message uh, that we input in the front end. So let's go ahead and open um, this website. So we're gonna write NP, no, we're gonna CD into my app. Then we're gonna NPM run dev. Yeah, perfect, so we have the website. It looks really ugly, <laughs> but that doesn't matter for the moment. And we're going to write some text into this input field. Let's write hello max and press submit. And then we can go over into the uh, Superbase uh, database and you can see that uh, the information which we input in the front end has landed in our back end. So let's maybe do this a couple of times. Uh, we can write um, hello again, submit it, and then we can refresh, and you can see these values all land in the back end. So let me do this a couple of times, but I think um, you can see uh, that this is working. Okay, so what did we learn? We learned three things. We learned how to create a local development environment uh, with Superbase. We learned how to create a new table using a migration file, and we learned how to interact with the database uh, through our Next.js front end. All right, that's enough for this video, I guess, and see you in the next one.